When Bukomi returned home, she found her mother and father waiting for her, their faces pale with worry. Bukomi, there has been an accusation, her father said, his voice trembling. They say you were still near the temple last night. They say you started the fire. Bukumi's wall spun. But I was here, at home. I did nothing wrong. Bukumi woke up to the sound of roosters crowing and the distant chatter of villagers starting their day. The sun cast a golden hue over the thatched roofs of the village promising another day of warmth and hard work. Bukumi stretched and rose from her mat, her mind already racing with the day's task. She had to fetch water, help her mother with breakfast, and then head to the field where the maize was ready for harvesting. The village of Ile Ogo was nestled between lush hills and a winding river. It was a place where tradition ran deep and every family had a role to play. Bukumi, though young, was known for her quick wit and kind heart. She often helped the elders, listen to their stories, and learn the ancient ways of their people. As she made her way to the river, Bukumi greeted everyone she passed, her smile infectious. She was well loved in the village, and her presence brought a sense of joy and hope. But that morning, an unusual tension hung in the air. Whispers followed her as she walked, and she noticed the worried glances exchanged between the women at the river. Did you hear about the fire last night? One of the women asked, her voice low. I heard it was in the forbidden room of the old temple. Another replied, they say it was a bad omen. Bukumi's heart skipped a bit. The forbidden room was a place of mystery and fear a room that no one had entered for generations. Legend had it that it held the secrets of the village, guarded by the spirits of their ancestors. Bukumi had always been curious about it, but her mother had warned her to stay away. When Bukumi returned home, she found her mother and father waiting for her, their faces pale with worry. Bukumi, there has been an accusation. Her father said, his voice trembling. They say you were seen near the temple last night. They say you started the fire. Bukumi's wall spun. But I was here at home. I, I did nothing wrong. Her mother took her hands, her eyes filled with fear and love. We believe you, my child. But the village is in turmoil. You must go for now to prove your innocence. Find the truth and return to us. With a heavy heart, Bukumi packed a small bundle of belongings and set off into the forest, leaving behind the only home she had ever known. She was determined to clear her name and uncover the secrets that lay within the forbidden room. As she walked, she felt the weight of her mysterious legacy pressing down on her. As Bukumi stumbled through the dense forest, her breath raged and her heart pounding. The distant shouts of the villagers grew fainter with each step. Desperation followed her movements as she sought refuge from the angry mob that pursued her. Torches blazing in the darkness like fiery beacons of doom. Just as exhaustion threatened to overwhelm her, Bukumi's keen instinct led her to a hidden a clove concealed by tangled vines and shadowed by ancient trees. There, amidst the cool embrace of the earth, she found sanctuary in the form of Mamaneka, a figure shrouded in mystery and wisdom. With a silent gesture, Mamaneka beckoned Bukumi into the depths of the cave, where the flickering light of a small fire danced against the walls like restless spirits. Her hands moving with practiced grace, as she tended to Bukumi's wounds. As the pain began to ebb away, Bukumi cast aside her torn garment, revealing the intricate pattern of a royal birthmark etched into her skin. Mama Neka's eyes widened in recognition as she beheld the ancient symbol. Her voice barely a whisper as she spoke of prophecies long forgotten. Bukumi and Mama Neka delved deeper into its recesses, 
guided by a sense of purpose that burned bright amidst the shadows. Within the hidden chamber, they discovered relics of a bygone era, tattered scrolls adorned with cryptic symbols, ceremonial artifacts, and a hidden alcove containing a testament to Bukumi's true heritage. As the pieces of the puzzle fell into place, Bukumi's resolve hardened like tempered steel, but Bukumi was no longer the frightened girl who had fled into the night. She was the rightful heir to the throne. As Bukumi and Mamaneka emerged from the hidden cave, they were met by a group of loyal villagers who had heard whispers of Bukumi's true identity and had gathered in secret to support her. Bukumi addressed the assembly, her voice steady and resolute. Chief Timini has deceived us all, she declared. He has stolen what is rightfully mine. Today we restore honor and justice to our village. The villagers, inspired by Bukumi's courage and conviction, rallied around her, ready to stand against the false chief. With Mamaneka by her side, Bukumi devised a plan to expose Chief Timini's treachery and reclaim the throne. Under the cover of night, Bukumi and her loyal followers made their way to the heart of the village where Chief Timini resided in his fortified compound. They moved with the steel and precision of shadows Slipping past guards onto the reach, the main hall where Chief Timini held court. In a bold and dramatic entrance, Bukumi and her supporters stomped into the hall, catching Chief Timini and his loyalists off guard. Gasps of shock and murmurs of disbelief rippled through the gathered crowd as Bukumi stepped forward, her presence commanding and wiggle. Chief Timini, Bukumi called out. Her voice echoing through the hall. Your lies and deceit have come to an end. I am Bukomi, the true heir to the throne, and I have returned to reclaim what is rightfully mine. Chief Timini, though momentarily stunned, quickly regained his composure and snared. You are nothing but a pretender, he spat. Seize her. But before his guards could move, Mamaneka stepped forward, holding aloft the ancient scrolls and artifacts that prove Bukumi's lineage. The rightful heir stands before you, chosen by the ancestors and marked by the royal birthmark. The crowd swayed by the undeniable evidence and the powerful presence of Bukumi began to turn against Chief Timini. Murmurs of dissent grew louder and soon the hall was filled with shouts of justice for Bukumi and down with the false king, down with the false king. Realizing his whole own power was slipping, Chief Timini attempted to flee, but Bukumi's loyal warriors blocked his path. Chief Timini was captured and brought before Bukumi, who stood tall and unwavering. Your reign of terror is over, she declared. You will face justice for your crimes against our people. With Chief Timini banished from the village and peace restored, Bukumi ascended to the throne, her rightful place as the ruler of the village secured. Under her wife's leadership, the village flourished and the scars of the past began to heal. Mama Neka and Bukumi's parents remained by her side, giving her guidance and wisdom invaluable as they worked together to rebuild the village and honor the legacy of their ancestors.